All right, let's jump to Mina Recover to clear his story as well for this time block. Run, run, run. All out run. Oh, wait. Run, other guy. That's Mina Recover. Damn, it's pretty early in his story. So I guess there's a lot left for him to do. Running along Koendori in pursuit of Miku, Inrikawa heard a cell phone ringtone coming from somewhere nearby. Oh, sounds like Hitomi's phone. Oh my god. Oh my god. Of course, this is the intro, right? In the intro we hear this and we see someone in the van and he's getting exploded. Suddenly a massive fiery blast knocked him from his feet. A deafening roar set his head from him. What was that? What's going on? He lay in a daze on the ground trying to wrap his mind around what had just happened. He was right next to it. He shouldn't be conscious. <laughs> oh Miku. He smelled the foul scent of burning rubber. Then came a sound of quick footsteps rushing up to him. Mr. Mean Recover, a voice called out to him as if across an impossible distance. Mr. Mean Recover. Was that Miku? He forced his eyes open and saw Miku looking anxiously down at him. Mr. Mean Recover. Miku, those things I said earlier. I'm sorry. I went too far. What are you talking about? That's not important right now. Miku choked back a gasp when Mean Recover realized he had blood leaking from his mouth. Oh god, shit! Fuck me! His body wouldn't move and his mind was reeling. What? What happened? Tell me. Miku's voice was dry and hoarse. There was a minivan. It, it exploded. Exploded? A minivan exploded on a city street? It sounded like a terrorist act. His reeling mind drifted back to the attempted bioterrorist attack on Kazumi Gazeki two years earlier. An unoccupied minivan had exploded outside an MPD station, and afterward, a device meant to scatter a dangerous biological agent had been discovered near the subway. With sudden clarity, Mina Recover recalled what Osawa had said earlier. The power balance of the entire world. Oh, wait, it's Osawa. Power balance of the entire world might be at stake here. Could there be some sort of connection between Osawa's warning and this explosion? There was. There had to be. Mina Recover's journalistic intuition told him it must be true. Something terrible was underway here in Shibuya. Police! A man in a suit announced. He crouched beside Mina Recover and gently lifted his head and torso. Hang in there, buddy. Stay with us. The change of position allowed Mina Recover to clear his airway and he sucked in a deep breath. Ugh. That didn't sound good, but as he did, an intense pain shot through his lungs. I, I think I might be done for. Whatever his intuition might be telling him, it didn't look like he'd ever be able to write about it. But if he couldn't get his words onto the page, the least he could do was tell someone else. With his last act, maybe he could still accomplish something. He strained to get a few words out. Osawa. Kenji. Osawa. The power balance of the entire world. As his voice failed, he heard the sound of ambulance sirens approaching. Paramedics began frantically unloading stretches. I guess this is a bad end. <laughs> Turning his head, he saw a number of other people who'd been injured in the explosion laid out on the roadside. Amongst them were a woman and a child. Emergency workers bearing a stretcher came over to mean recover. Forget about me. I'm beyond helping. See to the others instead. Mean recover shouted inwardly, but no one heard. That's pretty fucking crazy and and sad. Premonition of disaster. How do we prevent this? Mini Recover chased Miku as far as Kondori, only to be caught in the blast when a minivan suddenly exploded. A few simple words can change his fate. Someone who shouts something at half past three needs to change what it is they shout. If Mini Recover hears something that grabs his attention, he may not get too close to the explosion. Oh. Is it a chi? Let's take a look. Um, yeah, finding the van. What if a chi shouts the other thing? What was the other thing he, he, he could shout? Let's shout... Um, 
He to me, wait. He to me, wait. And she shouted, but she didn't appear to hear his cries. It's exactly the same. Did this change fate already? Did it? I think it did. I think it did. So let's... Yeah, yeah, let's just... Let's take a look. Uh, did this ch it did change me in Rikawa already. Looking for Miku. Hit me! Wait! As he ran along Koendori after Miku, me and Rikawa heard someone shout out a familiar name. Hit me? It was a pretty common name. Ordinarily, he wouldn't have given it a second thought, but he remembered that one of the Miss Midoriyama winners was named Hitomi Osawa. That made him curious. And then he stops just before the van, I guess. A moment later, he heard a cell phone ringtone. He immediately recognized it as an Aya Kamiki song. His reporter's instincts tingled. He stopped to take a look around, and one young woman caught his eye almost immediately. Oh. He couldn't assume that any pretty girl he saw was Miss Midoriyama. After all, it would be a little too convenient if he just so happened to run into her now. Still, it didn't cost him anything to ask. Are you here to me, Osawa? He might as well at least check. But to his own surprise, he hesitated in embarrassment. He'd never been too embarrassed to ask a question before. He didn't get a chance to contemplate that realization. What, she was right next to it and survived like that? How the fuck did Kanan do that? That's crazy. Well, he's only burned now. A massive fiery blast knocked him from his feet. A deafening roar set his head throbbing. What was that? What's going on? He lay in a daze on the ground, trying to wrap his mind around what had just happened. Behind him there was a minivan, fiercely abla ablaze. A minivan? An explosion. The first thing to pop into his mind was the attempted bioterrorist attack on Kazumi Gazeki two years earlier. Yes, we've read this. A uh, biological age and in the end no one had been harmed, but there were new rumors that the government had paid the terrorist organization a hefty sum to keep it that way. Wow. Right now Minrikawa was a stone's throw from the Shibuya precinct. Could this be a repeat of the Kazumi Gazeki attack? The entire area was in an opera. People were running around in panic. Minorikawa could see several injured people lying on the ground unmoving. And yet, despite the gravity of the situation, numerous onlookers were casually taking photos with their cell phones. Minorikawa got to his feet and went to try to get everyone away from the scene of the explosion. Damn Minorikawa. You're the best. Hey, you guys, get back! There could be another bomb! Minorikawa looked around as he pushed back the crowd. He was getting a strong whiff of a scoop. He needed to write his copy ASAP, but he couldn't just turn his back on the situation now. Two young men were strolling towards the burning vehicle. They had the look of juvenile delinquents. Whoa, what the heck? Is this for real? Ain't this dangerous? Like, for serious? The pair tried to find an optimal vantage point. Hey, Minrikar snapped. Don't get any closer. He spread his arms wide to hold them back. The young man came to a halt, but otherwise paid him no heed. Oh, this is bad. This is for real bad. Think this is a terrorist thing? Yo, get out your phone. Come on. But like, you think this is a terrorist thing? Dude, shut up. Just hurry up and call Suzumu. The taller of the two dressed in red was ordering around his blue-clad companion. Huh? The boy in blue huffed. Man, do it yourself. Say what now? Bitch, this ain't no time to get yourself all worked up. Mirikawa stood their arms still held wide, getting more and more annoyed at their back and forth. Yo, just make the call, man. The young fellow in red scowled. He wasn't going to back down. Huh? Yo, what difference does it make if I do it or you do it? It doesn't make any difference, so it doesn't matter if you do it. Yeah, right, it don't matter. So in that case, you do it. Oh god, this is getting annoying. <laughs> Look, I'm telling you to just make the damn call. And I'm telling you to just make it your damn self. Oh, enough of this already. <laughs> Minerikaba opened his mouth to tell them off, but then the young man in red spoke again. Dude, the goods from over at Endo Electronics are gone. You gotta let Suzuma know. The name Endo Electronics caught me in Rikawa's attention. Huh? Yeah, but ain't it all that are cheat dude's fault for getting all huffy at us? I mean, it was Kiryu who told us to go find the Endo storehouse. 
Yeah, but Suzuma don't like dealing in stolen goods. Says it's dirt says it dirties the SOS's name. Well what a coincidence. Look like these two were SOS members. Hey, mean recover call out. You two. He finally succeeded in getting their attention. Where's the Susumu fellow? I'd like to talk to him. He had no idea who Susumu was, having only heard the name just now. Still, from the way these two were talking, it seemed clear he held some position of leadership. You think I'd tell you if I knew? The fellow in red snarled. Minari Kava kept his composure. Listen, you guys know the Tenryo Gumi? The Tenryo Gumi was a Yakuza syndicate that operated in Shibuya. An up-and-coming Yakuza syndicate turned up on the scene 10 years ago, with the seemingly illegitimate Takarada Financing as its business front, a group offers monetary solutions for people in financial trouble, but those who accept their offers soon find that their troubles only grow and grow, embroiled in conflict with the Kanto Shira Minigumi, who have been long established in Shibuya. These street kids were sure to be familiar with the name, if nothing else. I may not look it, but I'm, pre in pre but I'm in pretty tight with the Tenryo Gumi. And maybe you two don't know it, but Suzumu has been showing up at their office a lot lately. Suzumu has been dealing with the Yakuza? Well, for real? Sweet! The two punks bought it completely. <laughs> What's SOS using as the hangout these days? I've got a little something to discuss with Suzumu. Hmm? Right now it's this bar called Inferno. Minri Cover made a mental note of the name. Right, and Inferno is where exactly? The two young men suddenly looked distinctly uncomfortable. Um, uh, uh oh, later. Yeah, I got a thing I gotta do too. Backing away, they took off through the crowd. What did they. Oh, they saw a chi. Hey, wait up! I need to know where Inferno is! But the pair had already vanished. Just look back, mean recover! Ambulances began arriving at the scene and paramedics rushed out to tend to the wounded. Excuse me, would you mind answering a few questions? Oh, it's Kano. Minu recovered, turned to see a man in a suit approach him, flashing his badge. So, a detective was with questions for him, huh? How about you answer a few questions for me? Was this an accident or an attack? We still don't know many details. Let me rephrase that for you. This is a major incident, Minu recovered, exclaimed. Huh? The detective looked pretty flummoxed. <laughs> I've been around the block a few times, and I know all your police PR lingo. And when you start talking about the details, that is 100% indic indicative of a major incident. Brushing aside Minu Recover's remark, the detective tried another question. Did you happen to notice anything unusual prior to the explosion? Unusual? Minu Recover fought back to the moments before the minivan blew up. Now that you mention it, I think I heard a cell phone ringtone. The detective tilted his head. A ringtone? No, never mind, forget that. There's no way the ringtone on someone's phone would be audible through all of that. Minrikawa struck the, f the thought from his own mind as he said it. Oh my god, Minrikawa! In all likelihood, he associated the ringtone and the explosion simply because one had happened right before the other. Kano. A large statured Caucasian man had called out to the detective. Evidently, the detective's name was Kano. Thank you for your cooperation, he said with a bow. Then he ran over to the foreigner. Mr. Minri Kawa. Minri Kawa turned at the female voice behind him. Oh, look at her. He found Miko standing there. She looked like she'd been crying. Miko, about earlier, I, uh, he trailed off searching for an apology. It's okay. That doesn't matter right now. Miko looked around the scene. Minri Kawa followed her gaze. Something big went down here, he said. I know, she exclaimed. The explosion. I saw it happen with my own eyes. You what? Miko looked around nervously. Are you alright? He asked her. You're not hurt, are you? I'm okay. My ears are still ringing a bit, is all. Good. So, what did you see at the time of the explosion? Miku assumed a thoughtful expression. There was this girl who was running towards the minivan. And then I think I saw this other mi Middle Eastern girl suddenly make a die for her. And then the van just exploded. Wait, hold on, Minrika said. So if I'm getting this right, it sounds like this Middle Eastern girl saved the girl who was running up to the van? Miku nodded. What's that? Just then Minorikawa's phone chimed. He'd received an email. It was from Chiaki. Mr. Mino, are you still working on your copy? Uh, yes. <laughs> he checked his watch. At this point, the 4 o'clock deadline was barely 20 minutes away. Nonetheless, he decided to stay at the bomb scene. 
He could definitely smell a scoop here, he was sure of it. Even if he couldn't get his six pages done by four, landing a major scoop should be enough to persuade the lone company. Min recovered, jotted his phone number down and handed it to Miku. I'll make things up to you, he said. Give me a call later. Miku took the scrap of paper puzzled. If you're looking for an Aiki Jujutsu Dojo, I know of you. At that, her face lit up. Mina recovered decided to process the scene for clues. As he wandered around, he caught sight of Detective Kano and his Caucasian colleague heading down an alley. Hmm, what's that I smell? Something pretty damn fishy. If they were slipping away for a private conversation, maybe there was some way he could listen in. Mina recovered hurried into one of the buildings that bordered the alley. He looked around and found a public bathroom upstairs at the alley and side of the building. Hoping beyond hope, he slipped up to the bathroom window. Wow. Voices outside. He held his breath and listened. Those international criminals you mentioned? Kanoa's words were faint, but he could make them out. Min recovered it a little fist pump. Yes. Correct. Roughly eight hours ago, they infected Maria Osawa with the Yuo virus. Then, they let her loose somewhere in Shibuya. Hold on. By Ua, you mean... The discussion involved some terms Min Recover wasn't familiar with. He focused all of his mental energy on what the two were saying. This is a killer virus with 100% mortality rate once it takes hold. 100%? Min Recover muttered to himself. The shock caused him to unclench the fist he didn't realize he'd made. This wasn't just an interesting conversation, it was monumental. It had us an incubation period of 12 hours. In another 4 hours, Maria Ozawa will go symptomatic. After that, she'll begin spreading the virus through the city. Don't they know that she's been injected with the antiviral agent? Hasn't Osawa told them? It's capable of airborne transmission? If we don't administer Kenji Osawa's antiviral before she de develops symptoms. Yes? Everyone in Shibuya is going to die. Minurikawa felt goosebumps rise all over his body. If they were talking about the virus and a Kenji Osawa, they could only mean that Kenji Osawa. He recalled what Osawa had said earlier about the power balance of the world being at stake. There was no doubt about it. This was a tremendous scoop. Well then we need to find Maria Osawa and get the antiviral to her as soon as possible. Just calm down. There's more to the story. Ah, oh, it's starting to leak out. The door swung open loudly and someone came barging into the bathroom. Ah. Uh, it was the Anagishita. Why him again? And why here of all places? Oh, I'm leaking here. <laughs> the Anagishita was on the verge of hysterics. His voice must have been audible outside. Kano and his companion went to take the discussion elsewhere. And they'd just been getting to the good part. Oh, shit. You son of a bitch. Enraged, Minori Kava grabbed the Anagishita and tossed him to the floor. I'm leaking. Oh, God, that's disgusting how he manages to grab hold onto this. Shut your mouth! He put all of his strength into an ankle hold and gave it a good twist. A professional wrestling technique that involves grabbing the opponent by the ankle. Being caught up like this can be extremely painful. It also puts a lot of pressure on the lower body. And if you're already fighting the urge to urinate, well... Ah! Yanagishita wailed. Ah! Min Recover left the idiot blubbering in the bathroom and hurried out of the building. He hadn't heard the whole discussion, but he had a scoop in his hands anyway. This would be a tremendous score for Heaven Publishing, enough to let the company rebuild. He was certain of it. And if I'm the one saying it, it's gotta be true. As he ran along, Mini Recover tried to plan his next steps. First, he had to get back to the editing office. He'd explain the situation to the people from the long company. Then he'd go find that paper paperwork for Osawa and have Chiaki check his copy. And then, after that? Okay, so he still had a lot of things he needed to do. <laughs> he swatted himself on both cheeks to get himself psyched up. Things are picking up, I feel like. His phone rang. It was Chiaki. M Mr. Mino, something terrible has happened. Chiaki's voice was a broken yelp. Well, calm down. Over in Kuandori, the spinny van exploded. Oh, yeah. I'm well aware. Thanks to that, I've got a big scoop, Dad. Chiaki cut him off. Just now? I got a call from Mr. Toyama's daughter, Hana. This time, Minori Kawa waited for her to finish. He had a sinking feeling. She said that Mr. Toyama was in there? It was a suicide. Minori Kawa's knees buckled. 
tell me you're joking. No, I mean, the van explosion is all over the news, and Hannah was in tears on the phone and... Mr. Mino? Mr. Mino, are you still there? Toyama had... killed himself? That can't be right. Mirakawa felt the energy drain from his body. No. Come on, it's enough that Sazayama died, not Toyama as well. It's not true, is it? They just think it was him, but he's actually somewhere else, right? That has to be it. TBC. To be continued. Great, so next time we can continue with Kano and possibly Osawa and then finish the time block. How many more hours are left in this game? I'm up to almost 40 parts, I think, now. Possibly more since I recorded quite ahead. So, yeah. Next time, Kano. Bye.